In this presentation, we will take a look at governmental funds characteristics, starting with the general fund. This is going to be the most important fund. Every type of fund accounting is going to have a general fund, only one general fund. It's going to be the most important type of fund that we have. Other types of funds we're going to apply as needed. We may have multiple other different types of funds, but any type of governmental accounting, any type of fund accounting will have a general fund and only one general fund. That's the first one we want to get a hold of, get a grasp of, compare and contrast the general fund and the government-wide type of activities. General fund, the primary governmental fund, the accounting entity of a state or local government that accounts for current financial resources for the core governmental services. So note we're accounting for the current financial resources. The general fund, like the, gov the uh, governmental funds in general, will be on the modified accrual basis. Then we have special revenue funds, and we only set up special revenue funds when the circumstances require the setting up of special revenue funds, unlike the general fund where we will always have one. Also, the special revenue funds may be situated so we might have multiple special revenue funds, unlike the general fund, which we will have one of. Special revenue funds generated when revenue sources is restricted by a donor or grantor or a tax or other revenue source is authorized by a legislative body for a special purpose. Uh, they show that all revenue from the restricted source was used for the special purpose. So, for example, we might have some type of revenue source, some type of tax. Say we have a gasoline tax and we want to use the gasoline tax just to fix basically the roads. And we want to apply the revenue from the gasoline tax to fixing the roads. Well, we, we might set up a special revenue fund then to make sure that the revenue from that specific source is then being applied as is given the requirement through legislation. Government funds include the general fund, the major fund, special revenue funds, which we've just spoken of, the debt service funds. So we may have to set up debt service funds depending on the circumstances to help finance or track the long-term debts such as bonds payable, capital projects funds. We may set up capital projects funds if we have capital projects where we want to track the uh, revenue, the sources of revenue, and the expenditures related to usually large projects. When you hear capital projects, you're thinking something like building a building, building a library, building a fountain or something, building like a bridge or something like that. And we want to basically track this information. Note then, again, we could have multiple capital projects at one time, multiple ca capital projects funds in order to track those capital projects as opposed to the general fund where we have one. We also might have no capital project fund as opposed to the general fund where we will always have one and only one. Then we have the permanent funds and that would be a situation only happening if we have a situation where we have a need for a permanent fund. What would that be like? Well, what if someone gave, gave money, donated money, but they can only use the interest on the money or something like that or situations such as that? Well, then the principal of the, fun, of the, of the funds are permanent. They have to be hold on forever and the interest would then be applied as was given the, the constraints of whatever the interest will be given for. Then we would have to set up a permanent fund in order to track the principal and then apply the interest or revenue as directed. The fund accounting equation. The fund accounting equation is in essence the same as the normal type of accounting equation that we've thought of assets equal liabilities plus equity. But remember that you can reformat the normal accounting equation from assets equal liabilities plus equity to assets minus liabilities equals equity. That then emphasizing the balance of the equation. In other words, it's emphasizing how much the assets are greater than the liabilities or the assets minus liabilities or the book value in essence of the organization, the value um, in terms of financial dollars of the organization. The fund accounting is going to be a little bit more complicated than that, but those, those general categories are going to be the same general categories. We're going to have the current assets. Note that when we're, talk when we're talking about governmental funds, we typically are talking about current activity, and therefore we have the current assets. Usually when we see a balance sheet for governmental funds, we don't see any breakout of current versus long term because we're focusing in on the current activities, the current flows. Then we have deferred outflow of resources, which in essence you can kind of group together in current assets because of the modified accrual basis. However, we have something deferred outflow of resources that doesn't qualify exactly as the definition of current assets, but these items will be increasing the net balance, the fund balance, and therefore act 
in terms of the accounting equation as similar to the assets would increasing the fund balance. Then we've got the current liabilities. Once again, we're talking about the current activities with the governmental funds. And so we typically won't see on the balance sheet for the governmental funds uh, current liabilities versus the long-term liabilities because we're focusing in on the current type of activities. And once again, because of the modified accrual basis, we also have the deferred outflow of resources. These being items that aren't defined exactly like liabilities, therefore broken out differently in a category or definition, but in essence, acting like liabilities, there's going to be items that are going to decrease the fund balance, what would be equivalent to like the equity section or the assets minus liabilities, the net assets type of items. So we, you can think of it as basically same type of accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity, our assets equal liabilities now plus fund balance. So we're just changing the name of the fund balance. Then we're going to reformat the accounting equation to assets minus liabilities equal instead of equity fund balance. And then as we consider that accounting equation, you want to break out the, the kind of nuance. I would think of it as another nuance, another detail in that in the fund accounting equation, we have something that is kind of like an asset but isn't defined exactly like an asset and therefore is broken out into another category. So you could think of it as assets plus deferred outflow of resources minus liabilities, current liabilities, because we're talking about uh, governmental funds minus this thing that's like liabilities, but doesn't isn't defined exactly as a liability. And therefore we could think of it as broken out, but acting as similar fashion as liability, deferred outflow of resources, and that then equals not the equity section as we would think of in a for-profit organization, but the equivalent to it, in essence, the fund balance. So note that this, this fund balance term, assets minus liabilities equaling this section, is something that's going to confuse people oftentimes because depending on, on what types of financials you're reading, you, obviously we have equity section for a for-profit organization. It could be re referred to as fund balance. You can refer to it as net assets. So just note that, you know, whenever you see these types of terms, you want to be able to have the specific term to the entity you're in. But at the same time, you also just want to recognize those terms as, in essence, functionally the same for the type of organization that we're talking about. So functionally, the equity section is much the same in terms of the fund balance, as much as the same in terms of the net assets. It just depends on, on the whatever the type of organization we have and the convention that's being used for uh, that section so here we have a statement of revenues expenditures and changes in fund balances for the city of anaheim and you'll note that we have the revenues up top then we have the expenditures note we have expenditures rather than uh, expenses because we're talking about the fund accounting which is on the modified accrual and this is one of the indications you have of that being the case you'll see not expenses but expenditures and you'll say ah modified accrual type of basis we're, t we're talking about the uh, more current flow uh, rather than long-term activity when we're thinking about the financial statements. And then we've got the other financing sources and uses down below, in this case, including the transfers in, transfers out, and issuance of loan payable. Fund operating statement accounts include revenues, revenues being increases to fund financial resources other than from financing sources like interfund transfers and debt issues, other financing sources, transfers to the fund and proceeds of debt issues and sales of general government assets. Then we have the expenditures, which is kind of like the equivalent of expenses for accrual accounting, modified accrual here, cost to purchase of goods or services, outflows of resources. And then we have other financing uses, transfers of resources from one fund to another. So in essence, you have a similar kind of faction here, similar factor where when we think about the income statement, we would think revenue minus expenses. Here we have revenue and then other financing sources, those items increasing uh, the, the, what we would think of as net income or revenue over the expenditures. However, not being of the same category as revenue. So we're going to break them out, but they act in a similar fashion. Then, of course, we have the expenditures, which is similar to the expenses for accrual accounting. This being the modified accrual accounting term for the similar act, similar item and then we have the other financing uses which acts in a similar fashion as expenses 
decreasing what would be net income or revenue uh, over expenditures, but not exactly the same as expenditures. So again, you can think of this as basically re these two items being revenues minus expenses, but in a no more nuanced uh, view of it, we're going to say it's revenues minus the other financing sources, which are, are going to you know increase the, the net income or the revenue over expenses and the same for expenditures versus the, the other financing uses.